I'm Jake Bruton, and today I want to talk to you about how we do foundation damp proofing and why I think these three steps all together are the three most important steps to making sure I don't have a wet basement in the long run. Let's do it now. Okay, so we are at a basement foundation. This guy is not terribly big. This is the fast foot, so if we had all this out of the way, we use the fabric footings here. Uh, and I guess I'm gonna add that in and make it four because those fabric footings, the forms for those, that is another version of damp proofing. They are gonna stop wicking from underneath the footing up and into the assembly. So in this case, we have a uh, formed footing with a formed wall sitting on top of it. The formed wall is behind this. The formed footing is underneath the dimple mat down here and we're trying to stop all of this from transferring any water that's out here in the backfill to the inside. So how do we do that? We treat it basically like our uh, above grade area. We wanna drain out and away, down and out. We wanna get everything away from the foundation as quickly as possible. We want nothing held in tension up against the foundation. And that turns into the three, the three things that I think are super important. Number one that you cannot see behind here, we'll have to lace in some pictures, is a fluid applied or roll on uh, monolithic uh, damp proofing agent. Uh, in this case, we used a product from uh, Polywall uh, and it's a roll on that's just making it so that the concrete is not gonna absorb uh, any of the moisture that's up against it. So we don't get any wicking from in to out. That could be a bitumen coating. Uh, bitumen coatings have a tendency to do the exact same thing and be slightly more cost effective. We had the poly wall from another project. We think it's a great product, so we just used it there. Uh, the problem with that, if and, and that's where we would have stopped 25 years ago if we are doing foundations, that's where we would have stopped. We would have just had a damp proofing agent over the whole foundation and then backfill with gravel up, you know, four or five feet and 18 inches out and call it a day. It's not entirely wrong, but the problem with this instance is we have one chance to do this before that huge pile of dirt back there gets backfilled into this space. I don't wanna have to dig this foundation up again. I don't wanna have to pay to replace plants again. I don't wanna have to deal with the issues of trying to get access to this again. This is the easiest time I'm ever gonna be able to reach it. Look, I'm down, I can touch the footing, I have plenty of room to work and it's gonna suck if I have to dig this up because I won't wanna dig a trench this big because I don't have room for that on the property. Uh, so we gotta do more than just the bare minimum now and ensure that in the long run, these folks are gonna have a dry basement. So then we add this, this is a dimple mat. This product is run of the mill. I, I think it's from Armtech. Um, it, it's not even, doesn't even need to be branded. It's just a dimple mat. It's our rain screen. So if you think about the rain screen that we talk about up top all the time, this is a rain screen, that's a rain screen. This is a pressure relief. If you think about the damp proofing that we rolled on, it's one monolithic coating until we have a crack. Well, and then we have a crack. We have any place that dirt or rocks or anything that are up against that crack, it could be less pressure to run into the building than it could be to go ahead and run down and out. Well, Therefore, we're not gonna just leave it damp proofing. We're gonna put our rain screen on, this dimple mat. This dimple mat runs down, it turns on the footing, it gets the water past the footing. Uh, so now we have a waterproof substrate or a damp proof substrate, a drainage plane to relieve that pressure, and then we have to do something with the water when we get it down, and that's this gray fabric here. It happens to be gray because we just bought gray this time. Uh, we have a perforated pipe encapsulated in gravel with a burrito wrap of this fabric in it. The burrito wrap is, everything here is trying to keep that pipe from silting in. Uh, we want that pipe to be able to catch that water and drain it away at all times. There are some products like a Forma Drain that is like we would form our uh, footing with that material. It's a plastic, uh, looks like a hollow plastic two by six that's perforated. So any water that gets in it, it can take it away. Uh, we just can't get form a drain in our market. You could do this uh, pipe detail with the perforated back black corrugated pipe. I hate working with the 
the black pipe because it never wants to lay down. You know, it's, it wants to have that pipe memory of being in a circle or in, in a in a roll. And so it's kind of a pain in the butt. So we buy uh, green, uh, I think it's Schedule 35 PVC that's already has holes in it. And then we also drill some other holes in it uh, to give it a little bit more drainage. So let's talk one of the most important parts about this is this burrito assembly. That burrito, our footing, we have our, uh, our poured footing and then our wall sitting on top of it. So where I put my two hands together, that's a cold joint. That's a weak point in the assembly. We need to protect that point as much as anything else, if not more. So we have to get water away from it. I'm eight feet down. I'm, you know, I'm only six feet from the surface here, or, you know, maybe, maybe a little less, but at the back, we're eight feet from the, from the footing up to the soil. We're not getting uh, surface water down to this point. If we're getting surface water even four feet deep, we have a problem with our surface water management. This point is groundwater. This is rising water in our market. It might be different in your market. You have to understand water tables in your market. So here, this, this pipe, this burrito, this assembly is to take care of water that comes from below before it gets to that cold joint. So this pipe has to be below the horizontal that is the footing because I, or at least part of the pipe has to be because that water's rising up. If I put my pipe up here, I realize that's an extreme 10 inches above the footing. That water can sit 10 inches high all the way around the building before it even gets to the pipe. Some people will put this pipe up on the footing. I also think that's wrong. I'd rather catch the water before it gets closer to that. Uh, our, our architect, our engineer, they spec below the level of the footing. If you're really concerned about the water coming down here, which shouldn't be much if you're managing properly with downspouts and grade above, do two. Do two. This guy down here is there to take care of that water before it gets to that cold joint. If you're trying to take water off uh, that's coming from above, put a second one up there. It's cheap. It's cheap materials. It's uh, you know not incredibly skilled and expensive labor. This isn't the same price as what you're going to pay somebody to put up crown molding. Do it now. That's the argument here. Now, the last thing for pipe placement is holes up or holes down. So most of the pipe, uh, when you buy it from the manufacturer, it will be you know round and have uh, a Y shape of holes. So it'll have two holes that are kind of 40 degrees off of each other or something. Do we put those holes down or do we put those holes up? I mentioned earlier that we drill extra holes in the pipe. That's because we want both. If we put the holes down, it catches the water rising as soon as possible. That's a great thing. If we have a failure in our silt system and we get silt in it, then the holes clog first. Now we have a pipe that's hollow that also doesn't have any access to it. So we don't want our holes down, right? So we put the holes up. Well, if we put the holes up, then the water has to rise all the way to the top of the pipe before it catches anything. I'd rather catch that water a little sooner rather than have to dig the pipe in lower than our footing. So we'll do holes up, holes down. We'll drill holes after we set the pipe so that it has holes all the way around. I know you can order perforated pipe all the way around. It's just, it's difficult to come by in our market. You got to remember that we're in the middle of nowhere kind of from a materials access standpoint. So holes up, holes down, below the grade of the footing. The dimple mat leads to the footing to the pipe. The dimple mat covers the damp proofing, and now we're ready to backfill. We're gonna backfill with a lot of gravel. The gravel works kind of like a, a dimple mat as well. It's a drainage area. And then we're gonna make sure our grade is positive slope away from the house. We're gonna cap with clay, you know, just below our topsoil because we have so much access to good clay. That'll work as a little bit of a barrier, and we're gonna down, we're gonna downspout away from the house. Everything is down and out, the same as it would be from the roof down on the siding. Everything is pressure relieved as best as possible, and everything has a specific role to play here so that all of the system together will ensure a dry basement from now on. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe to the uh, uh, newsletter. There's two a week. You're gonna miss it. There's too much stuff. There's too much really good stuff. I'm really happy that they let me be involved. I'm really happy I'm learning from people every day. I just told Lydia the other day that I think that she's a great driving force in the industry. I'm learning stuff from her every day. Thanks for watching today. Give me a follow on Instagram.